Well, hello, woodworkers. <clears throat> Today I'm working on a uh, cutout for my granddaughter's uh, wedding present. And this is what it's going to look like. And yes, there's one extra M in Jamie, but that's how they spelled her name. Um, the dark names are going to be cut out of walnut and also the, the large heart and the small heart and the bells are all going to be cut out uh, of the walnut. I've got uh, some material uh, for the background that is a real light wood. It came from a pallet salvage that I made here a while back and uh, they're both pieces, the walnut and the salvage wood are both a quarter inch thick. So we'll probably set the the uh, table at about three degrees so that uh, when we cut the, the two pieces together, sandwiched together, they will, the top layer, the, the walnut will uh, be per, pretty well flush with the top of the of the lighter wood. Well, as you can see, I have started to cut this thing out. Uh, it's coming along pretty good. The main thing that I've had to do is um, keep in mind which pieces I want to be um, be the background color and which ones I want to be the, um, the dark color. Uh, for example, I have the on the word Jamie, the name Jamie, I have to have a dark circle for the dot on the top of the eye. So that I had to cut that the opposite way, the opposite angle, uh, as I did when I uh, when I was cutting out the rest of it. Unfortunately, I don't have a uh, a correct light bulb in my light for taking movies so what I've got to do is use my old incandescent light here in order for me to see the, the outline of the pattern.
Well, I'm not sure you can see this. I can't do a close-up of it. Uh, but uh, what I've done is taken a piece of tape and put it on the side of my project here so that I will know which direction, which rotation I need to go with relationship to my the angle that I have the table set at. Uh, it's a handy reference to know which direction you need. Uh, at least for me, if, as, as I am loading uh, the project onto the blade, I sometimes forget which direction I need to go next. Now what I'm going to do is move the table back to a zero point and cut the outside of the heart because we don't need to have it out on an angle because we're not doing an inlay. Now the best thing to do is to get down where you can look right past the blade and the edge of your tri-square and determine if you are setting on zero, which it seems that we are here. All that's left to do now is to cut out the outside of the heart One thing I should mention, uh, there's no forgiveness if you make a mistake on this thing, so don't try to correct the mistake because uh, the inlay pieces won't match and you'll be kicking yourself around the block because you made that mistake and tried to cover it up. lighter colored. Turn it over so that it fits. The lighter colored background will set in like that and then we'll glue it in place and then we can once we get it glued in place we can sand it and boy we're gonna have a pretty nice looking setup here I think. Okay, which way does this go? This goes here. Takes me a little time to get this figured out sometimes. See how that's coming together? Okay, here's one more piece. Let's see what we can do with that. Maybe it will work. Maybe, maybe, maybe. We sure hope so. There we go. That looks nice. One more piece. Let's see what happens here with this one. Get it turned around the right direction. And we'll see if we can set it in there. 
Ah, oh, things are coming along. Okay, remember I was talking about that I needed to do something opposite for the eye. So it will go in from the front like this. So that it'll be a contrasting color to the to the background. Well, here it is all glued in. It's kind of a gooey mess right now. But uh, this will all sand off nicely. And we'll have a nice plaque. And I'm going to finish this with a Danish oil. And I believe that the colors will really pop out. One thing I forgot to mention. I've made kind of a slurry of uh, walnut sawdust and glue and just mixed it up till it's mostly mostly uh, sawdust and enough glue to make it fit into the the imperfections in between the the pieces of wood so it covers up a lot uh, I've learned that one thing we want to do when we're making this kind of an inlay is to any drilling for starter holes for our scroll saw blade we always do it in the darkest wood that way it's not quite as obvious and it's easier to cover up that way so the next thing to do is let this dry uh, and then we'll do it a, a quick sanding and put some finish on it I had my camera running I thought when I was putting on the first coat of the Danish oil but here's a good representation of what the thing looks like I'll probably put one more coat on just to be you know really make it look nice the nice thing about Danish oil it's not hard to work with it doesn't seem to have um, it doesn't it's not sticky it doesn't stick to your fingers or anything like that it is an oil base I highly recommend Watco Danish oil I'm not getting paid for advertising it. It's just a good product and I wanted to pass it on to you. So that's it for another week. I hope you've learned a few things and you can laugh at my mistakes and maybe learn some things from what I showed on this video. So this is Wayne for What's Up Wayne and we'll hopefully God willing, we will see you next week. Bye for now.